Hi there, my name is Greg Snell with UAV Coach, and in this video, we're gonna explain how the return to home feature works on the Mavic 2 Pro. Let's get started. Here's what we'll learn in this video. Why is return to home important? How does return to home work? What three actions can trigger return to home? And what are the best return to home settings? Before we dig into this information, it's important to understand that not all drones will utilize the same built-in return to home safety mode. Even though they are similar in certain regards, if you're not flying a DJI product, then we would suggest researching your brand or model specific return to home features because they could differ slightly from the information that we're gonna share in this video. However, if you are flying a DJI Mavic 2 Pro or any other DJI consumer drone, and this video and the information we go over applies directly to you. So first things first, why is the return to home important? At its core, it is a safety feature. The DJI return to home function is a very useful safety feature in that it helps your drone return to a safe and accessible landing location automatically. And even more so than just a safety feature, it can also make your flying experience easier too. And an example of that is if I'm flying relatively far away and I'm at the end of a really long session, all I need to do is press the return to home button on my controller and the drone will come back automatically. So with that said, how does return to home work exactly? When your drone is powering up and you're about to take off, it is automatically searching for and connecting to multiple different GPS satellites. The drone needs to connect to four or more satellites in order to mark your takeoff point as its new updated and current home point. Once it's able to do this, you will see and hear confirmation through the app. And I bet it's something you've heard before. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Also, this home point doesn't move with you. It is possible to update it during the flight, but say for example, you're on a boat or you're in a car, the location where you first set the home point is where the drone will return to automatically if the RTH is triggered. It will not come to your new location if you've moved during the flight and not reset your current home point. Once your drone is up in the air, it will continuously analyze real-time GPS coordinates and then utilize this information to assist in any automatic return to home flight if triggered. In the case that RTH is triggered, and we'll go over how it gets triggered in just a minute, this is what happens. In the case that the return to home has been triggered, the RTH safety feature will automatically kick in and the drone will hover for a couple seconds before turning back towards the home point and then rising to a set altitude. Now this altitude by default is 30 meters or just over 90 feet in the app, but you can change this to whatever you want. Once the drone hits that altitude, it will then fly back to hover directly over top of your home point and then automatically begin to land. Now at any point during this procedure, you can tap the red X within the app to stop the automatic return to home and take control yourself and then land the drone yourself, which is what we would recommend. If during the automatic return to home process, something happens to get in the way and this obstacle is taller than your set return to home altitude, the drone will actively try to avoid this obstacle by slowly flying around it, utilizing its VPS sensors. Now it's best practice to try and fly your drone in an open area that's free of any kind of interference. And you always want to keep a visual line of sight between you and the drone. Note that any urban areas or any tall buildings or radio towers or magnetic fields or any kind of like large metal structures may interfere with your GPS connection to the drone and possibly even the built-in compass in the drone itself. Essentially any kind of large structures could interfere with the GPS signal and therefore disconnecting your drone and automatically triggering the RTH function. And that brings us to our next point. What are the three main actions that trigger return to home? The first trigger is a low battery. The return to home safety feature will automatically trigger if your intelligent flight battery has been depleted to a point that it cannot automatically return to home safely. When this happens, you'll hear a prompt in the DJI app and the drone will automatically begin to ascend to its return to home altitude before returning automatically to your set home point. Now, this will only happen if you do not take any action within a 10 second countdown. 
Now trying to beat the auto low battery return to home safety feature is possible. You can do this by manually stopping the process, switching into sport mode and boogieing back to your home point as quickly as possible. And even though we wouldn't recommend this, I have done it sometimes. It really depends on where you're flying, how windy the situation is, how well you know your drone, how comfortable you are with your piloting skills. Trying to outrun the low battery is a risk though. And honestly, it's not one that we want to take very often. Most importantly, you do not want to play around with the low battery warnings because if the battery power is critically low like below 10 percent then the drone will automatically land itself and you as the pilot cannot cancel this process you can still control the drone by revving the motors with that final amount of battery power but the drone will land automatically wherever it is it can be above trees or above a body of water in the middle of a field doesn't matter the drone is going to land with that critically low battery warning and when it happens if it's not a Above where you are then you're gonna have to go and find it and that is not fun especially if it's in water. The next trigger is known as the fail safe return to home and this happens when the drone loses signal for over three seconds with the remote controller or 20 seconds when using Wi-Fi and when this kicks in the screen on your app will go totally blank it goes black and your heart will skip a beat it is incredibly scary if it hasn't happened to you yet uh, just wait for it but if you've seen this video hopefully you'll know not to panic just give it some time because when the fail safe return to home uh, trigger kicks in the drone will do one of three things depending on how you have it set up now if you have it set up in the automatic return to home it will do like we've explained in this video it'll pause for a second it'll slowly rotate back towards the home point and ascend to the return to home altitude that you've set into the app when the drone starts coming back to your home point eventually when it gets close enough the signal will reappear on your app and you'll be able to see what the drone sees at this point you can cancel the return to home process and continue flying now this should shouldn't happen if you keep the drone within line of sight while you're flying and it's not blocked by any obstacles. It's when the drone gets behind a building or you're near like telephone wires or some sort of power plant that you could lose signal with the drone and the fail safe will kick in. But if you've got it set up for the simple return to home automatic process, then once the drone gets close enough to your home point, you'll be able to regain the signal and continue flying. The second fail safe return to home setting is known as hover. So in the case that you lose signal with your drone, the drone will just hover in that location and you have to physically walk towards it to regain the signal and continue flying. Now we wouldn't recommend this because in the case that fail safe kicks in, the screen usually goes blank and you might not know where the drone is, especially if you're not flying within visual line of sight. So if you don't know where the drone is, it's really difficult to reestablish the connection if it's just hovering in one place. And at the same time, it's losing battery so it might get to the point where the battery is critically low and it either automatically lands or it tries to commence the low battery automatic return to home procedure where then hopefully you'd be able to regain the signal and land it safely yourself. So hover is the second fail safe return to home setting you can choose if you want to. The third one is land. So in this case the drone loses signal and it lands automatically wherever it is. Again something we wouldn't recommend. The final variable that triggers return to home is known as the smart return to home. Now this is a user triggered return to home safety feature that happens when you physically press the return to home button on the remote control or within the app. When you do this, the drone will automatically begin the return to home procedure. Now you can stop this procedure at any time by pressing the flight pause button on the remote controller or the giant red X within the app retake control of the drone and land it yourself safely. Now something to remember also is that if the drone is within a 20 meter radius of your home point and you press this return to home button then it will try to land automatically assuming that there's no hazardous landing area underneath it. So that's it for what triggers return to home. Now it's time for what are the best settings for return to home. All right, so we're back inside and let's talk about the advanced settings for return to home. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that you enable the vision positioning within the app. This feature needs to be enabled in order to allow the next two settings, both landing protection and precision landing to work. The next setting is landing protection. And this is another very useful safety feature in the fact that when it's enabled, the drone will try and scan the landing area to make sure it is suitable to land automatically. If the drone thinks that the landing area is not suitable, it will actively try to find a better area to land. Precision landing is when the drone briefly pauses after takeoff to take a photo of its home point landing zone. It will then reference 
reference this photo during the automatic return to home flight process to make sure that the landing area is matched with what the sensor sees below. Finally, the RTH obstacle check setting means that your drone will actively try to avoid any obstacles during its automatic return to home flight. Now, in the case that it does detect one, it will ascend to try and avoid that obstacle. And we actually mentioned this earlier in the video where you have the power to set the return to home flight altitude. Now, by default, it's 30 meters or just over 90 feet, but you can set it up to 70 meters or 100 meters. Whatever you decide should be the maximum altitude during that automatic re return to home flight process so that it doesn't run into any obstacles on its way back. Now, if you have the RTH obstacle check enabled, it means that it will do this automatically even if you've disabled the obstacle avoidance for your drone. All of the DJI Mavic 2 Pro return to home settings are turned on automatically by default, and we would suggest leaving them turned on all the time. I would also suggest checking every so often just to see that you haven't accidentally disabled one of these settings. Please let us know what you think of the DJI Mavic 2 Pro return to home settings and the information shared in this video in the comments below, and we can start that conversation conversation there. From everyone here at UAV Coach, we're wishing you blue skies and safe flying.